If you're wondering why the audio quality is so bad or weird, that's because I'm um, recording the audio with my phone, because I don't have a main mic anymore. It broke. First, one note I'm going to make my intro for the tutorial in After Effects 2015, but it doesn't really matter which version you use because they're all basically the same. Also, the After Effects project download is in the description. But for this video, there is no AP download because I'm not going to be making anything. The first thing that we're going to do is make a main comp. You do that by right clicking here and click new composition. And then you basically copy my settings. And then you click on OK. So now we have our main composition where we are going to make the intro inside of. Okay, I have another tip for you guys and that is for organization in your project. This right now looks really unorganized. We are going to organize it using labels. You can find labels in edit, preferences and then click on labels. These are my settings and you can copy them if you want. Also copy these settings. You get to this by right clicking on here and then click on columns and then you get it. So for the organization, here is how you see the labels. You can click on these boxes and then you can select the label. You can basically make these layers a certain color. So you can see, oh, this is the background, this is the text, this, these are splines. Is a burst. Now for some useful uh, scripts and plugins that I use. I mainly use Textify as a script. I'm pretty sure that it's five dollars. So yeah that's not much. One thing that a lot of intro makers struggle with are colors. You can use this site. It's in the description link. This site basically generates endless colors for you. You just click on generate and then find other colors you want. If you have problems with this, just search on YouTube or Google for some tutorials on this. I have two tips if you don't really have motivation for intros and that is to stream while making intros and to watch a video while making intros. I don't really stream that often, but I do watch videos a lot while making intros. I don't really watch those videos, but I mainly listen to them. And I find that fun while making intros. Um, go to window and make sure that all these things are enabled. Now you want to go to the text tool and click in your comp and then type your text or something like that and then you want to select the layer click ctrl alt and then home and that will center the anchor point then you want to go to align if you don't have that go to window and click on align then you want to click on these two with the layer selected you can double click on the text and hopefully this will pop up and then you can change the font with clicking on layer and then pressing S. You can bring up the scale property and you can make it bigger or smaller. And then we have our first text layer. You can make the background black if you want. Then you right click on the layer, click on pre-compose and then do text dash one. Uh, make sure you have this enabled. Now we are going to add some effects on the text. Um, for instance, a inner shadow. You get it by right clicking on the pre-com layer, I mean. Go to layer styles and then inner shadow. Then you see a little inner shadow here. And we can change the settings of that by clicking on the, this triangle. I'm happy with my settings. So then we are going to right click again, pre-compose, text dash two, and then move all attributes into the new composition. Okay, 
You can add some more effects if you want, like inner glow. Just mess around with the settings, search up on Google how it works. But I am now going to right click again, layer styles and add a stroke. And then you have this. This is already a pretty nice text, but we are going to make it even better. Pre-compose it and then I want to pre-compose it again. You can double click on the, the pre-compositions to open them. So here we have the drop shadow, here we have the stroke and the one after the stroke you want to apply the effect echo space and go to setup make it like 20 oh yeah first click repeat go to repeater click on y offset and make it four or two or three make this like minus one okay now we have this and we want to make an adjustment layer, move it down and then type hue saturation. And then you can make the lightness less. And now we go to our main comp and then we have this. This is already a pretty nice text in my opinion. But now we are going to add the warp effect. And select shell lower, something like minus 20. The vertical distortion, something like 20. Then we are going to pre-comp it. Then we are going to add the drop shadow effect. So you get a little shadow. But we are going to change some settings. And you can duplicate this with Ctrl D. And then you want to take this number and do plus 180. And then we are done. Um, if you want to add some more effects, feel free to do that. You can pre-comp it to just text. So now we are going to go to text 1 for the textify. If you don't have textify, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen. Click on this plus thing to add the textify effect. Then go to here and here you can add all the effects you want. So I'm going to add scale, position and zero rotation. You can change the bounds to something like two. Scale in, you can make it to zero. So now we already have this. Okay. And if you want to add some rotation, you can change those parameters. If you want to add some position, you can change that. Just mess around with the settings. Okay, now that we are done with our textify effect, you can go back to the main comp, and here you have the text with all the effects on it. Now I'm going to add a label. What if we want to add an effect, for instance, a rotation? Um, you do that by clicking on the text layer, press R for the rotation, click on the stopwatch and go further in time and make this 360. Select these two keyframes and press F9 and click on this graph editor. And then we get this graph. I use value graph. Okay, so now we can change these things. Now it's a lot smoother already. Okay, first we're going to start with the most basic thing, the overall background. And we, we can make that by making a solid by right clicking, go on new and then click on solid. Then you can pick a nice color. I'm going with a light blue-ish. And then click OK. OK, now we have our overall background. And now we can add some things on there. Such as particles. Particles are these little shapes that just fly around the screen. So right click in the composition and make another solid. The color doesn't matter. For the particles you need a plugin called 
particular from Red Giant Trap Code. Now we have this. So we want to click on a designer. If you don't see that, make sure to open this by clicking on the triangle. Here we can change how many particles we want. I'm going with 10. We change the emitter type to sphere and change this to XYZ individual. Make this 2500, one and one. Now we have this. If you want the particles to go down, then you wanna drag the position, the 540, you wanna drag it up. But if you want the particles to come up, you wanna drag it down, like that. So now we have this, and we are going to gravity, and we are going to set it on minus 150 to make it go up, or 150 to make it go down. So now we're going to emitter and then motion, and we are going to set the velocity on 300. Now we are going to particle type to textured polygon colorize and then click on choose sprite. Then this screen will pop up with all of these particles. You can also make custom particles and you can just select one that you want. Now you have all these really small triangles. We are going to set the life to 10 so they stay a little bit longer. We're also gonna make the particle feather zero. Now we can move on to the size and rotation. We want to make the size something that you like. And then make the rotation speed Z something like 0.2. Then we can go to color and click random from gradient. Then we can select a preset and to change the presets we can click on these little squares to adjust the colors. We can also drag them around. Okay, if you're done, just click apply. Now we can add the drop shadow effect and change some settings. Okay, now you can select both layers for the particles and the triangle thing with holding control. Then right click and click pre-compose. And of course click on move all attributes in the new composition. Now we have our particles. If you want plexus, you can go to this tutorial. I'll hopefully put a link in the description for this tutorial. Now we are going to go to optical flares. To make optical flares, right click in the composition and make another solid. Then go to here and then apply the optical flares effect. Okay. So now we have this. First we're going to change the position to 960 and 540 so it's in the center. Now we're going to click on options. Now you can delete all these presets. Okay, now we can click on glow and maybe streak if you want. And then click OK. You can change the color by clicking on here and then selecting our, our color. If we want multiple optical flares, just scroll down and click on on black next to render mode and make it transparent. Then you can duplicate the layers with Ctrl D and then you can change the position. Okay, now on to the shapes. You, you can find the shape tool up here. Hold your left mouse button to see all these different shapes. Hold shift and draw a rectangle. Then click Ctrl, Alt and Home to center the anchor point and then go to Align and then click on these two. Now we can click on Fill and then remove it. You can adjust the stroke width right here and you can adjust the color right here as well. If you select the shape layer and press R you can change the rotation of the shape. You can also animate that if you want. You can do that by clicking on the stopwatch. Now go to the start, click on the shape layer and, pr and press S. Then click on the stopwatch and make it zero. Then go to about two seconds and then make it bigger until you can't see it anymore. Now we have this shape. Okay, when you're happy with your shape, you can pre-compose the layer. Now we can duplicate the layer and then offset it by a couple frames. 
Now we can add the gradient ramp effect. Now we can change the colors of the shape. Then select them both, right click them, click on pre-compose and make them two. Now we can add the echo effect to make them repeat. Make the echo time with seconds about minus 0.9. And then you have this. Also make the number of echoes like 50. Okay, now we have our shapes background. Now we can add some effects on it. These are some examples. For instance, the drop shadow effect, the turbulent displace effect, and of course, the Venetian blinds effect. Okay, now we're going to make a sunburst. So we make it by selecting the star tool and then making a star while holding shift. Click Ctrl Alt Home and make it in the center by clicking these things. Then go to the Polystar Path 1. Now just copy my settings. Okay, if you have this, select the layer, click on R, click on the stopwatch while holding Alt. Then type time times then something like 100. And then it rotates infinitely. If you're happy, you can pre-compose the whole background. Right click the layer, go to time and then enable time remapping. Let's say that this null is your song and you have the markers on them. Then you go to the next marker, click on this diamond and then repeat that. Select all these little keyframes, press F9 and open the graph editor. Select all of them, click on convert to auto bezier to make them linear and then drag them up a tiny bit. So you have this. And now our background goes faster on the beats. Now for the last thing, we're going to make a transition. Go to the shape tool and then select your shape that you want to use for the transition. Make the fill white, zoom out a bit and then make a really big shape while holding shift. Do Ctrl Alt Home, make it centered and then animate the scale from zero until it fills the whole screen. Then make it stencil alpha. So now we have this. Okay, for the normal splines, you have to go to the pen tool, click it, disable the fill by clicking on the word fill and then click here. And then you can make a path for the spline. You can do that by clicking and holding your left mouse button. So now I'm holding it, and now I'm holding it again and I'm just dragging it around the screen. Okay, so I've made my spline, but I'm not really happy with my thickness and color of the spline. So we can change that by clicking on this and type in the thickness of the spline. Here you can change the color by clicking on this. Okay, now we have our spline, but first we need to animate it. So click on this triangle, click on add and then add trim path. Open the trim paths and set the end to zero. Then you want to go to the beginning of the composition and click on the start and end stopwatch. Now you want to think about how long you want to have the spline on your screen. I want to have a two, three seconds, so I want to go to two. Then I want to set the start and the end to 100%. Now we want to select the lower keyframes and then drag them a bit to the right. And if you preview, preview it, you can see this. If you want to make the spline shorter or longer, you can select these two keyframes and drag them around. Now it goes slower and now it goes faster. To make the spline a bit more smooth, you can select everything and click on F9. To make the spline mirrored, just simply click on the shape layer, click on Ctrl and D at the same time, press R and then make this 180 degrees. Okay, now on to the 3D stroke splines. 
first make a solid, the color doesn't matter. And then search up 3D stroke from Red Giant Trap Code and apply it. Now you want to make your path. You can make your path by drawing the path on the solid while having it selected. So it's a mask. Now you can change the thickness. I'm gonna do it 50. You want to go to taper and enable it. Click on both stopwatches and go to the beginning of the composition. Now you want to go to about two seconds, drag the start all the way up to 100. Now you want to go to the start in keyframes and you want to make the start and the end both zero. Now you want to go to this keyframe and make it 100. Now select the upper two keyframes and drag them to the right. Now you have a 3D stroke spline. Now for the saber spline, right click in your composition and make a new solid. Search for your saber spline and apply it to your layer. Once again, make a path. Okay, now we have our path. You can select one of these keyframes. I'm gonna do mist. Click on customize core, core type layer mask, and then you already have this nice line. Okay, you want to go to zero seconds again, the beginning of your composition. Click on the stopwatch at end offset and start offset. Then click the layer and press U. Then go to about 2 seconds again and make them both 100. Now you want to select the lower two keyframes again and drag them a bit to the right. Now scroll all the way down, go to render settings and then click on this triangle like this. Then click on composite settings and make it transparent. Now a couple effects that you can apply to your splines. First, turbulent displays. And you can click the layer, type in cap, and then you can change the cap. As you can see, now it's round. And one last effect is the drop shadow, of course. Drag it on there and change some settings. Okay. Here we have our splines. Okay, first the normal burst. You want to click on the pen tool and then draw a line, something like this, near the middle of the screen. If you click on the shape layer, you can see the anchor point. Now, this is pretty off, as you can see. So we are going to open this up, click on content, shape, transform shape and then you can redirect the line okay as you can see it's near the middle now now we are going to add trim pass and repeater you want to go to the start of your composition open trim pass and then set 100 percent to zero then click on start and end the stopwatch and then you want to go to about one second then make them both 100%. Select the lower two keyframes and drag them a bit to the right. Now you have this. You want to go to the last keyframe and make it something like 70. Okay, now select all the keyframes and press F9. You can close up the shape layer now. Okay, select the shape layer and press U. Then select all the keyframes and press the graph editor. Also, I use the value graph. So if you want to follow my tutorial, you want to set it to value by clicking on here and then click on value. Then select the, these two and drag them a bit to the left. Now you have this. Now go something like the middle of, the, of these two keyframes. Click the layer and type stroke. Then click on the stopwatch and press U. Now go to the last keyframe and make it zero. Now you have this. Okay, now open up the shape layer and go to repeater. Now make this a random number. I'm going to set it to five. I'm going to make the rotation 72 because 360 divided by five is 72. Then make this position zero. Now you have this. Close it up, 
click on the shape layer, press Ctrl D, press R, and then take 72, and then do divide it by 2. Now you have this. Now you can change the color if you want, or change the offset. Something like 4 frames, and now you have a nice burst. Okay, now for the shape burst. Go to the shape layer and make a shape. I'm going to make a circle. Go draw the shape while holding shift. Click on the layer and press Ctrl Alt Home. Then go to align and click these two. If you don't see align, go to window and click on align. Now you have this circle. Go to the start of the composition and press S. Make this zero and click on the stopwatch. Then go to about one and a half seconds and make it 100. Select these keyframes and press F9. Then open up the graph editor. Now you can select this keyframe and drag it up. Now you have something like this. Go to about 15 frames and then select the layer. Then type stroke. Click on the stopwatch again and then press U. Now go to this keyframe and then make this zero. You can duplicate the circle by selecting the shape layer and pressing Ctrl D. Then press P. Now you can change the position. Go to the effects and presets panel and go and search for looks. Make an adjustment layer by right clicking here and click on adjustment layer. And then you can apply the looks effect to the adjust adjustment layer. Now we're going to open it by clicking on edit. Okay, now you want to click on something down here and press T. Go to post and yeah, you can add some stuff that you like. I mostly go with S-curve and pop. You apply them by just double clicking them. Then you can go to camera and then apply something that you want. Mostly I don't pick any f anything from camera. Then go to lens. Click on lens vignette and then edge softness. Then click on matte and click a couple times on diffusion. Now we're going to change some settings. You do that by clicking on this thing and then press T. Now you can change the curve. And then for the edge softness, you want to zoom out a bit and then make this a little bit wider. Same goes for the lens vignette. And then at diffusion, you can set the color to purple because this intro is purple. And you can make the highlights only a bit higher and then the grade a bit less. And then you're done with the color correction. And if you're done, you can press this thing. Now for the sync, we want to make two adjustment layers. On the lower one, we want to add some S shake. S shake. And on the top one, we want to add some transform. Now we're going to add motion tile to both of the layers and then we're done with the effects. Now we're going to change some settings and we're going to add some keyframes. First, at the S shake layer, you want to drag motion tile above the S shake and make it 300 by 300 and enable mir mirror edges. Go to the first keyframe and click on amplitude. Click on the layer and press U. And now you can zoom in a bit. And then go something like five or four frames behind. Now make it zero. So at zero it doesn't shake and at one it does shake. And you can make it 1.5 if you want. Then you zoom out a bit. Select this and press Ctrl C. Then go to the next keyframe and then press Ctrl V. 
and go to the next key keyframe and press Ctrl V. And at the end we want to make it zero. Then select all of these except for the first one. Zoom in and drag it four or five frames to the left. Now you have your shake. But first we're going to disable reflect, so make it no. We're going to enable motion blur and we're going to set the frequency to something like 4. Select all the keyframes and press F9. Open up the graph editor and then you can change. As you can see we have a nice shake at the beat. Okay, now you can close the S shake and click on transform. We're going to drag motion tell above the transform and make it 200 and 200. And enable mirror edges again. Then go to the first beat and click on the scale stopwatch. Click on the layer and press U. Click on the S shake layer and press U as well. Now you want to go to the first keyframe and make this 100. Then you want to go to the actual beat and make it something like 120. You can make it 125 or 115, just whatever you like. Then we're going to do the same. Now select these two keyframes, press Ctrl C and then go to the next keyframe. So this one and then press Ctrl V. And we can ease it again by clicking, by selecting them all and pressing F9. Oh yeah, also make, uh, make it 100 at the end. Okay, here we have our basic sync. You can make the sync zoom out if you want by going to the second keyframe and make it 80 instead of 120. Okay, now we can add some black bars if you want. Click on the rectangle tool. If you don't see that, hold it and then select rectangle tool. Make the stroke black of course and then make this about 100. Then double click the rectangle. Click on the layer, press S, click this and make this about 500. If you want to make the black bars bigger, you can make this like 200 if you want. I like it at 250. Thank you so much for watching the last tutorial. I hope they helped you. So yeah, bye.